Hey, what's up? So the simple way to take a screenshot without installing a dedicated screenshot tool is just with image magic. It has a tool called import. You just type import and then you give a file path. So uh, I don't know, test.png. It gives you this little selection tool. You can select your area and then you have a screenshot, which uh, as you can imagine, this is very easy to script with if you want any sort of a custom screenshot script. And I wanted to go over a couple of screenshot scripts here, um, which actually will work great with another tool. Since there is reason you might want to use a dedicated tool that isn't image magic. And I'm going to get to why you might want to do that. But um, we can start with just the really simple script here that somebody actually submitted this to me on GitHub a while ago. This has two main functions here. So it can either take a full screen screenshot with a uh, root window, or it can just give you that little selection tool. And if you use that selection tool and just click on a window, it will take a screenshot of that particular window. So this script really has all of the basic functionality you would want in a screenshot tool. It's what a 14 line script here. Um, it also makes sure that you don't have any duplicate file names by just using the date command uh, for every image. And it also sends a notification once the screenshot is taken. So um, I also have a script that I made some uh, expansion and improvements on the simple script uh, with some stuff I wanted. So a hex code color picker, first of all, which if I pull up my shortcut for that, it just is going to give me a hex code and copy it to clipboard. I can, you know, click anywhere, get a hex code. Um, it also averages uh, color for an area if I wanted that. Um, everything gets copied to clipboard with xclip. And there's also the ability to screenshot the current window directly uh, with just a single hotkey. Um, rather than having to pick up the mouse or anything. Um, I should mention with hotkeys, I have everything bound with DWM, but uh, you can bind with whatever you normally bind hotkeys with, whether it's uh, X bind keys or simple X hotkey daemon, etc. Um, so anyways, the color picker is probably the most complex thing here, and it's still, you know, not too hard to, to grasp. Um, it's just a temporary image um, that image magic is then going to perform the function on it needed to figure out the color. Um, and image magic really has, it, it's just got so much stuff. If you ever need to do any sort of image automation, um, whether it's, you know, batch processing a hundred images with something or just some basic stuff, image magic is really the way to go. If you're looking for, you know, a cli way to do this, um, it's got, you know, hundreds of options here for processing images. So I did want to point that out. Um, this is like just an image magic fan video at, at this point. Um, anyways, um, so what I'm doing to get the particular temporary image for the selection I wanted, I'm actually using select operation, AKA slop. Um, since that allows you to just get specific geometry, um, that's what slop is feeding out there. Um, however, it also allows you to select just a single one by one pixel selection, which for a color picker is, you know, kind of important, um, which image magic import doesn't actually allow for one by one selection. Uh, at least to my knowledge. So anyways, um, it just gives the hex code. I could actually change this to give the sRGB code if I wanted that instead, um, etc. Uh, pretty simple rest of the script here. Everything is, you know, what you would expect since import is honestly not too hard of a tool to grasp. It's pretty simple how it works. Um, there's also XDO tool uh, getting the window focus so that I can have it bound to get a uh, current window screenshot if I just, you know, press like a keybind to do that. Um, a case statement here at the end to direct everything and just xclip for uh, feeding stuff to clipboard. So um, the import command in this script or in the in the other script here as well could easily be replaced if you wanted to, instead of import, use a dedicated screenshot tool. And the reason you might want to use um, a specifically dedicated screenshot tool is for speed and optimization and options that, you know, otherwise you would actually have to automate in a script yourself um, that screenshot tools, since they are meant specifically for screenshots, already provide. But uh, really, I would say speed and optimization are probably the main reasons you would want to get a dedicated tool. Um, there's like 30 different screenshot tools listed on the Arch Wiki, and I actually tried a bunch of these for this video, and honestly, most of them I'm not really a huge fan of, but I did want to go over the ones that I, I do like. Um, the first one being MAME, uh, which is kind of a, a classic screenshot tool. And I mean, even just MAME compared to Image Magic is, uh, Image Magic's import is, is far better in terms of speed. Like it's noticeably better. And it's not like Image Magic really lags that much when taking a screenshot. Like if I just, you know, take a screenshot here, like that's not, it's not laggy, uh, but there definitely could be, you know, an improvement in speed. And if for whatever reason you are looking for speed 
in screenshots. Um, I don't know, if you're screenshotting competitive gaming or something like that, then, you know, that might be something to consider. Um, the, th the thing with screenshots is everybody's gonna have some sort of a different purpose for taking screenshots. Like, everybody has a different thing that they're gonna need to do with that screenshot, which means everybody has, like, different things that they're looking for in programs, which is probably why, you know, there's 30 screenshot programs in existence, you know? Um, but anyways, back to MAME. So, um, some of the features it has, it has a delay for screenshots. Um, if you wanted to, you know, have it wait five seconds before taking a screenshot. Uh, by default, it puts the cursor on the image, or you could have uh, a flag to remove that. Um, and really just other stuff that you would expect in terms of screenshot tool. Um, it also is made by the same developer as Slop. So, um, unfortunate names on all these tools, by the way. I mean, we've got, we've got Slop, we've got MAME. We've got a shotgun. We've got grim. Like, I don't know. It, it's kind of funny. Anyways, so um, Slop has all sorts of things you can do with it if you wanted to look into that. And um, these command line tools are great if you want to go down the rabbit hole of automating stuff. And um, I actually forgot to point out, I did want to point out, uh, I saved this up here, this, uh, this one command here. I wanted to point out that if you did ever want to automate things post screenshot, it's really easy to do that with image magic. Um, so for example, this command is going to watermark uh, the center of an image with just, well, bread there. And that's the sort of thing like, I mean, okay, this is kind of a joke image, but um, watermarking an image I could see, you know, serving an actual purpose. Like say you were taking screenshots and you wanted to put like your username or something on the bottom of every screenshot and you want to just have a automated way of doing that, well, Image Magic can do that for you, right? So there might actually be reason that you want some sort of automation uh, post screenshot. I, I mean, that's the watermark thing is what I thought of, but I'm sure there's other things people could think of that's, you know, things you might actually want. Anyways, so um, MAME has lots of useful screenshot features. There's also a shotgun here, which is, it claims to be twice as fast as MAME. The developer has proof of that. In my anecdotal experience testing it a bit, um, it definitely is far faster. So if speed is of extreme importance to you, shotgun might be something to look into. It's essentially similar to MAME, but with a few less features in exchange for that speed. It's written in Rust, so it's fast. Um, and then there's also Grim, which is a Wayland utility. And I actually wanted to point out uh, Grim specifically since um, a lot of these utilities are for X11. I mean, image magic stuff, a lot of that's going to have to do with X11. And then MAME and Shotgun are both for X11. And like, yes, maybe you could make it work with X Wayland, but um, a Wayland specific utility is Grim. Um, it also works great with Slurp. I have tried this on a laptop before. I don't have Wayland on, on this computer, obviously, so I can't really demonstrate it here, but um, it works great. Um, I also wanted to mention each of these is available in the Arch uh, repo under the extra branch. Um, they're all, you know, spelled how you would think, so you can get them there. Uh, but anyways, the last thing I wanted to show was Flameshot, because this is something I think most people have probably heard of this. It's a really popular utility, but like, it's just, it's just useful. I mean, it might be kind of a, a big utility compared to everything else, and it doesn't really have the command line options for scripting that you might want, but the ability to just mark up a screenshot as you're taking it is, like, unparalleled, right? It, it's super important to be able to do that if you're doing screenshots for, like, any form of collaborative work where you got to point things out in the screenshot. And this is the sort of thing where like if Flameshot didn't exist, you'd be opening your screenshot in, in what, like GIMP or something and trying to do all of this where with Flameshot, you can just do it directly. You can add blur. Um, you can actually move this, this screenshot area around if you needed to do that. Um, it's just a really good utility. So um, as much as, you know, I do try to use minimal programs, Flameshot is one of those things where it's just useful to have all the features it has. It really is. And it's, um, uh, configured pretty simply, um, just config flameshot, flameshot.ini there, uh, really self-explanatory config. Uh, you can even set up the UI colors with Pywall if you wanted to do that. And honestly, it's a good program. So if you need any of this sort of extra stuff in screenshots where you might have to like draw an arrow to point something out or add some text in directly or something like that, right? Uh, Flameshot is a great tool for that. Um, if you're just looking for, you know, command line scripting automation, um, any of these other tools, if there's something else you think is a tool worth mentioning, let me know. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace.